Hey everyone, welcome to episode 52 of Friend or Foe. In this great episode, I welcome Shoddy Potoski from Danger and Eggs, which is now streaming on Amazon. Guys, you gotta check out this show. I mean, it's so much fun, it's bright, it's colorful, it has just fantastic characters. Uh, if you don't already have a subscription to uh, Amazon Video, you, you gotta it just just put down the cash, man. Just put it down because you will love the hell out of this show. I mean, it's just really, really great. Um, Shadi and I also talk about her upcoming new show called 12 Forever. And man, we just had a really good chat. Shadi is such a warm, wonderful person. And... Um, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this episode. Um, I also want to let you know that there are all sorts of incredible humans that are going to be guests on upcoming episodes. And boy, do we have some really cool contests coming up. Guys, I I would love to tell you who our um, upcoming guests are. Uh, but I can't quite yet because then crazy things happen as soon as it comes out of my mouth and then it doesn't happen and then we would be sad. So sad! But of course, I always post updates on the social media, um, which is across all platforms at friend or foe pod. That's F-A-U-X. And I should shut up now so you can enjoy this episode. Please enjoy episode number 52 with Shadi Podoski. Hello, Dr. Evil here. Enjoy the eclipse? That was my idea. Yeah. While you were all staring into the black void, I was stealing all the world's plutonium so I can build a laser to black out the sun for good. So enjoy this podcast while you can or you will soon be eclipsed by my sheer genius. <laughs> this is the Jabberjaw Podcast Network. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Friend or Foe. This is Devlin Wilder, and I am here with the absolutely fantastic Shadi Podoski. How are you, Shadi? Um, I'm good. Thanks for asking. Of course. <laughs> uh, no, I'm great. Uh, my show came out, Danger and Eggs, on Amazon, and uh, we're working on another show, and, you know, I'm living the dream. What's Hollywood. the other show? Can you talk about it yet? Um, it's Julia Vickerman's show. It's called 12 Forever, and it was a Cartoon Network pilot. It's on YouTube, um, and we are going to make it for somebody else. That's excellent. Yeah. Well done. You know, I I was just telling Zig, I, didn't, I totally didn't realize um, when... Like, I've been trying to get you on the show for a while. I actually sent you an email, like, I think over a year ago. And you said, yes, absolutely. And then, I don't know, something went wonky, as it usually does, because technical difficulties. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure did it was. You, did you I go blame on a little myself. Hiatus? There was a little well, hiatus, well so. listen, um, <laughs> um, this, this show has had many transformations. Uh -huh. And um, uh, okay many, that, many. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I. <laughs> Um, and, uh, they're, you know, um, uh, uh, irreconcilable differences. I'll, I'll leave it to that. I suppose uh, it just, um, it was one thing and it had to become another thing. And this is, this is the new show and this is, uh, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. this is much better. It's a much, you know, it's, uh, it's a great facility and I got Zig who is my, my consigliere. He's, I mean, without him, the show. Just Are you apart, happy, Zig? So. Zig shaking <laughs> their head. Yeah, this is a really nice space. I have more time. A year ago, I was so busy. You were. Yeah. And Extraordinarily now, so. Uh, now I can do whatever I want. And it's freaking I'm, awesome, I'm right? Drifting around. It's I'm, amazing. It is. It is. I'm a little. I I have to get my act together. I have to start working again. But it's great. No, but I'm you're already. But you're already week. so. Oh, nice. Yeah. No, it's very like chill. Good. I slept. I slept until uh, eleven. Nice. On a Monday. Is is that why you were late to my studio? Uh, then I had to work. Ah. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. All but right. As long as it was work related, it's yeah. passable. Yeah. <laughs> um. When I first sent you a message about um about being on the show, I I had just watched, I guess, the pilot. Okay. And um, 
Amazon Video must have been having like the the pilot showcase. Um, that that must have been, been two where years I, ago. Oh, that was okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, because the first email that I sent, I think, uh, was, yeah, like, I guess it was maybe almost two years ago. Wow. It was in 2015, yeah. yeah. Cool. And so. I, I had just checked it out. I thought it was just incredible and amazing. I was like, I got to have you on the show, like, immediately. And then uh, uh, things and happen with my co host. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, the, they're listening. the show, I, I have no doubt that he listens to every show and, and, you know, throws his phone across the wall. And that's okay. I won't. <laughs> Have you have you ever had one of those people that you've worked with that you just you just want to strangle constantly? Um, I don't. I'm not into inflicting pain. I don't have your <laughs> whole thing going on. But yeah, I've been around. You know, you you meet people and you work with people that aren't really good fits. That's the way I like to look at it now. Just not a good fit. Right. Time and place. Maybe at a different time in a different place, we would be great together. But but yeah, now I've you have the most perfect very dramatic relationships with people. I've worked right. With. Sure. But now you have the most perfect fit ever. You're you partnered with Chris Hardwick, yeah. And so that guy, um, it's no I, I don't I don't understand. Let's talk about sleep. I yeah. I don't understand when. I mean, does he take power naps? Is that is that how he gets through his days? I don't I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't comprehend. I don't, I don't know what the secrets are. I don't think he takes power. I haven't. I don't know. But I know <laughs> he doesn't sleep a lot. He's I wouldn't imagine very he available. does. Available. He gets up pretty early and he goes to bed pretty late. So I think he just powers through and he's got a ton of, ton of energy all day and he's just like moving to the next goes, thing. I've goes, never goes. seen him just not be doing stuff but it's also because there's a lot to do and I think yeah. he you know if you read his book or, or know about his story it's like I think in his 20s and, and early 30s he did not move very quickly right? and, and uh, doesn't want to end up there again and saw the results of working really hard so um yeah, there's no reason for him not to. It's all working out. Everything he goes to, it's great. I mean, Absolutely. He's, he's doing great. Absolutely. So, yeah, no irreconcilable differences. He's, like, <laughs> the best partner in the world. He's he's every, he's every just as nice as people think he is in, in the real That's world. That's what I hear. And he's, he's the, super smart. And he, He's the nerdy Tom Hanks. Seriously. He's he's very... <laughs> yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to confirm or deny. <laughs> he's, but he's, he's so, like, he's so smart. He's so insightful. You know, he started the Nerdist podcast because he just wanted to like talk to people, and he's, you know, he's kind of like he was a self help junkie for a while, and he just really likes to understand what makes us all tick. So he's just, I'll call him and I'll have some problem, and it'll take him five minutes to give me like a great answer. He's really good at understanding what's going on, and I know. listen, I li I listen to the Nerdist podcast a lot, and uh, obviously it's it's very much a, a muse for. You know, myself, my career, this podcast, obviously, um, and he's just, he's, um, he's incredibly thoughtful and incredibly insightful, and he just, you know, he's a, um, he's a comedy wizard, but he's also very, very heartful, you yeah. know, um, and that's, no, that's and that's pretty deal. amazing. Yeah. And those same elements are uh, what makes you and your and Danger and Eggs. So wonderful, um, and uh, it's it's such an easy show to watch, and the the characters are so electric and powerful, but yet very unbelievably fun. And um, of course, uh, Dee Dee, voiced by Aidy Bryant, right. is is wonderful. I mean, that's the thing is, yeah, D Aidy and Eric Noble are. We sold the show with Eric Noble attached. Um, Aidy, we found right after. But they're so good, you know? So it's like even if we write something that falls flat, they fix it. They're they're amazing. They're really, really good at what they do. I mean, Eric, I think Eric's voice is so unique, and AD does such a good good take on what a DD could be. And it doesn't <laughs> nobody ever sounds I think we did a really good job with casting voice actors, and I think they're all amazing. And nobody ever sounds cartoony. No one's really yelling in a weird way. It's like it fe I, it all feels really genuine to me. I don't know. Like as a person who made the show, I still am amazed by the voice actors all the time and and how we got away with not having one person that's just like you know like, the, <laughs> like overly too big in their right. in their cartooniness or like thinking that they have to do what cartoons do. And even when there's characters who who are that, they they fit that so beautifully. Yeah. Um uh like the very adorable Kate Mikuchi who uh <laughs> 
played essentially herself it's, on the she show. Did. She played Kate. Um, that that was uh, I I watched that episode, episode five. Um, just that episode alone. I mean, it was gargantuan uh, in the guest appearances that you had. You had Kate, had Weird Al, mm -hmm. uh, Jonah Weird Ray Al. was in there. I wanted Weird Al to uh, play himself. But he he didn't want to because he gets asked to do that all the time. Of course. So, so he played Polka Sven. But yeah, Kate and Jonah played themselves a version of that. I mean, right. Jonah, a heightened version. Yeah, yeah. Jonah's Jonah's Jonah. Right. He doesn't love it. <laughs> but Jonah, <laughs> but Jonah's so great, man. He's he's yeah. that that whole. That whole deadpan thing that he does uh, is just so genuine and amazing. Um, oh, and that poor guy who couldn't find the bathroom in the episode. Yeah. <laughs> we like our runners on Danger and Eggs. Oh, my God. Yeah. It was, uh, that was pretty cool. Um, well, thanks for liking it. I love it so much. Yay. I'm I'm a super hyper nerd. So, I, to, of course, the things that I like, I really like. Um, you created the show with Vincent Stahl, is that Oh, correct? no, that was... Um, uh, Mike Owens. Mike Owens. Yeah, okay. Vincent was my old partner before. Chris bought uh, Vincent out, so they were he was my partner for seven years, and now Chris is still my partner. Awesome. Um, but yeah, no, Mike Owens, and Mike Owens um, created uh, Philip the safety egg is this like countertop size egg who was kind of avoiding the perils of breakfast, and then I kind of rewrote that backstory and and created his mom, and then we started working with this improv group out of um, Minneapolis called Splendid Things and that's where Eric Noble kind of stepped in as Philip and brought that voice to it so it was like it was a really collaborative kind of thing to get it five years like we made a sh uh, adult short in 2010 and then in, in 2015 we made the pilot wow. so it was like a big gap between like starting those characters and then but relatively, like that's that's a pretty fast turnaround, right? I've, yeah, I I've guess. Heard, I've heard so many filmmakers say, you know, that they've it's taken 10, 15 years. To, the okay, project has been yeah, rolling around. I think five years. It's a hell the, of a long in, time. In don't my get me world, wrong. It yeah, feels like a long, a much longer time because usually anything else I've pitched, I guess I've sold right away, and it's you know we make a pilot and it's dead and it's done and there's nothing I can do about it. And it's changing now to where, like, turnarounds are a little bit easier and there's a lot more people that will buy stuff from other companies. But um, that was a hard one. We we worked it, reworked it. We had another network really want to do it, and then they didn't want to do it. So it was, it was more confusing than any other animated thing I've ever done before. Well, there's really a lot involved. I mean, it's, it's not uh, – it's – the animation is beautiful. The characters are very well written. I mean, obviously, you have an amazing team. I like this to put it all together. <laughs> this is great. I, I will continue fluffing you about it, honestly, yeah, because no, I, I just love it so much. Um, you also worked on Yo Gabba Gabba, yeah. which is the the preschool equivalent of the Beatles. Like it's just um, any any time I'm around. <laughs> I like for, that too. For, I've never for those heard of you before. not not uh, not not seeing Shadi's face right now, she uh, <laughs> yeah she smiled quite big at that. Well, yeah, that's nice. It, well, it it really is. Anytime I'm ever hanging out with with parents with little kids, they I mean that's that's all they talk about. You know, are the characters on that show and um, yeah, that uh, met kind of an untimely demise. And I think we everybody who worked on that show and Julia Vickerman, who I'm working on Twelve Forever with, or I mean it's her show, but I'm I'm producing it. Uh, we all, like, when you work on a show like that, we were like, oh, we'll never work on anything this cool again. Like, that's a show, and I'm not, like, that's the first show I ever worked on. That's the first TV project I ever did. So, like, um, I thought that was the bar for everything. Like, it becomes a hit, and then Brad Pitt's dressing up as your character for Halloween, <laughs> and, like, Shiloh, right. and, like... And then, you know, we'd go to the, we'd do the live shows and those were bananas and it's like you're hanging, it's just Sarah Silverman and Snoop Dogg and, you know, Harvey Weinstein. And like, it was like all these, it was just like this celebrity, like all the celebrities like loved the show and would show up for it. And like, um, I got into clubs in New York that had like long lines because I worked on that show. Like, it's not what a kid's show normally would be at all. It's pretty out uh, there. Yes. But it's. It's so revolutionary. And then it's, when it ended, we were all like, we'll never have that feeling again. We'll never be able to work on something that's so... It's also... It was so fun. It's like, you can do a paper cutout animation one day. You can do an animation out of felt another day. It was like just completely freeing and super creative. And 
and uh, yeah, it ended way too early, and now we're all trying to find something that's a little bit magical. It's very magical, uh, I would say. Danger and eggs. Um, I'm, I uh, as you can see, as usual, I I have my copious amount of notes here, and you've just worked on so much. Um, you also worked on the uh, as as an animation supervisor. You've done that a number of times, right? Yeah, over the yeah. years on uh, on the Mad series yep. for Cartoon Network. Yeah, I see you have a Mad and shirt I'm, with I'm Weird rocking, Al right now. I'm rocking my Mad uh, yeah. my Mad magazine T-shirt yeah, with that's Weird a, Al. That's it's, a fun which one is an exclusive. It's uh, I love this shirt. It's my favorite shirt. It's been through a lot. Nice. <laughs> um, yep. And uh, how was your experience on that? Oh, that was cool too. That was just like they would. Um, that was a really interesting production model because it was done over on uh, Warner Brothers. And what they would do is it was it was basically like, and I don't want to, it felt like it was basically like the two creators doing everything. And it wasn't, of course, there were writers and everybody doing it. But they had this thing where they would just write a skit or sketch, record it, just the two of them, and then um, get the actors later. So it was like a and a different way of animating than you usually do. You know, usually they did scratch for everything. So it'd be mm. like us just sitting here and saying, like, you know, you like cheese or whatever the, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. the mad kind of sketch would be. And then 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 they would uh, send it over to us, and then they would say like, just do like whatever style. So then everybody in the studio would do a, one style frame for it, and then you know they would pick what they liked. So it was just like everybody kind of got an, uh, a chance to like be a director of a short and, and oh, uh, that's you know, very design. cool. I mean, I'm, there's probably a couple of people that slipped through the cracks and maybe they're sad now. But you know, uh -huh. like it, it, mostly it was like it was kind of a meritocracy where like I, you know, the art that they loved um, meant that that person got to kind of design that short, and it was super cool. And then they would do the uh, hire actors and bring them in and and do the sketches and. And then we got to see the final thing after we animated it. It was super cool. Wow. Yeah. That's a, that's a like really that amazing too. collaborative process. Yeah. The way they, I mean, that would be great to do. Like, it's just like, it felt, they had, it was so streamlined, you know, that, that show, like the way they did it. And I don't know if I could ever pull that off. I don't think I'd have the courage to just do the scratch and hope it all worked out. Shadi, I think you can do whatever the hell you want. That's really nice. Of you. <laughs> because you're, but, you're, our, I mean, you're kicking major ass. You've, well, you've got your own true. animation. Can I tell company. you, like, uh, where I spend the day? No, bed please tell me. Is is I don't want to be doing children's animation. <laughs> like Screw I want to be. That. You, you know what I mean? Like I would rather I want to be making like indie films and and uh, and uh, dramedies on on. Netflix. You heard it here, folks. You so, you like, heard it here <laughs> first. Folks. Yeah, so it's like I've been trying to get out. You know, I was up for a writing gig on Transparent. I've like, I've directed a Pepsi uh, commercial. I've like tried to get out of animation and do more live action. And I, I do a lot of photography and stuff. And uh, I cannot crack that nut. I've worked on a few pilots, and it's like nothing's gone to series. So it's just like, but then in, with the animation, especially with kids, because there's more animation for kids. Sure. Um, I get called all the time, and it just it's like a job. So like my pain is that like it's like not quite the show I want to be working on. I love doing Danger and Eggs. Like I feel like we did something, especially with like the LGBTQ representation and stuff. I feel like we did something that kind of like maybe raised the bar and maybe set. I guess yeah, set the bar. You know, it's it's not a footnote. It like it it. It means something. I get a lot of like really cool fan mail type stuff. Like it, it's really important and cool. So like I love that I did that show, but it's not exactly what I want to be doing. So like you know, while you're sitting there saying like all this nice stuff, I'm like, oh, okay, I just want to do an AMC <laughs> show. Why can't I just be like a PA listen, on Better Call Saul? Listen, it's coming, right? I mean, you know, I don't know. Well, I mean, the problem is is it's very difficult to make any once. Hollywood sort of pegs you as being something. Oh, listen, I get it. Yeah, I mean, you see this. <laughs> I, I, if I, if I didn't have the beard, I lose twelve years, and I have baby face, yeah. and I'm, it's all nerd all the time. Yeah. So this is this this frizz here is is this peach fuzz is all that keeps me from like get, getting all the nerd roles. Hey, yeah. that's which is great. Yeah, the, the, I mean, uh, nerds it's, it's, are king right now, and I mean, but I'm, you want to for Silicon Valley? Let's be honest. But you know, uh, I I love I love playing the nerdy types and the and the over the top types. 
but I can also, you know, be a bad motherfucker. Yeah. You know? I have a, it's sort of a joke, but on Instagram, it's, I have this cash shaddy isn't a villain. And anytime I feel like I look particularly evil, um, I, I post a cash shaddy as a villain. And I really wanted to play a villain. <laughs> like, a, I wanted, I want to do all the like trans stereotypes. I want to be like, like a really shitty person that's like yeah. maybe a little too gruff and, and, you know, I don't know, chop somebody's dick off or something like something and then gets murdered, you know, like, like yeah. what everything that all, all the trans people want to play like a romantic lead and be like seen as like a person in the world. But I think I want to just be the, the worst you just, gutter. Do you just want to knock some heads ever. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. So, um, I don't know if that'll ever happen, but I'm not that far away. Like nobody's people can see me. Like we're not supposed here's to the, be villains. Here's the great thing about it, though, Shadi. You can write yourself into that role. No, no, that's true. You can. I mean, you're a great writer. You can just write the role for yourself. Yeah. And I've done that. Call I've, call Chris those. up and be like, "You're gonna produce this for me, bitch." Is that how? Is that how that's how it works, works, right? Oh shit! I'm Didn't you? Know, I mean, wrong. you have him right you there on your phone, like in your contacts, right? Yeah, because he doesn't have anything else going on. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, he does. He gave me his email. Well, there you go. <laughs> no, he, no, he's super great, and I and I think, um, you know, I think it's just a matter of the finding the time and and doing that stuff and the courage. You know, there's like it's it's like, do I spend time making that thing or do I keep doing the thing that works and gets me a kind of cool looking car? <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, and it's really fun. Like my job is so fun, and I love you know, I love working on this stuff and i'm really excited about working on um 12 forever because it's brilliant but yeah awesome i mean i i can't wait to see it um i um i've been trying to do a lot more voiceovers um the past few years okay. it's uh, i love a job i can do in my pajamas yeah it's the absolute best and i'm gonna pretend uh, you're just pitching me right now you brought me in. You brought me in to do your podcast to just well, be like, uh, it wouldn't be a total lie. Um, no, that happened. That happened one time. It was really weird. It was like, oh, we got this. Uh, the, you know, it was a mutual friend, and she's like, oh, we got this meeting for you at DreamWorks. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Whatever. Yeah, fine. I'll go to that. And the whole time, that person was just like, I want a different job. Let me come work for you. And it was oh, just yeah. like, it was such a weird. But, and it was a lunch, so I had to sit there through lunch. Oh, sure. And it was like, I think they felt like they were just hinting. And then the other person was like, you know, like whatever I would say, you know, if I said like, oh, I really like writing this kind of this kind of character. And then it would be like, you know, Jacob loves writing or whatever his name is. Oh, was. yeah. Poke, I would poke, never, poke. I would, don't know who that guy even was. I think I just blocked it out. It's a traumatic memory. But <laughs> oh, yeah, no. You get, pitched, you get pitched a lot. Yeah, actors are the worst. We we truly are. Yeah. Actors are great. <laughs> Love I got to throw myself under the bridge sometimes. Uh, I know, no. I know, I'm totally needy and shameless, but that's just acting is that's just who I am. Fucking hard. <laughs> like I, you know, I've done small things, and it's I, I, I don't, I have too much anxiety. Well, the audition process is a total nightmare. Yeah, it's it's a it's a roller coaster of nightmares. Uh, you know, just uh, diving through volcanoes and you know, yeah. <laughs> into toilets. It it's it's really. Um, I love, <clears throat> excuse me. I love doing taped auditions yeah, when I have a chance, I, I which again I can, I can do out. in my pajamas. Right. You know, I put on a nice so shirt and then pajama our pajamas are naked yeah. the rest of the way down. It's, it's and yet great. You got dressed for a podcast. I did. I did get dressed today. Yeah. <laughs> not not always. I mean, Zig seen me in my in my birthday suit a couple times in here. My know? friend was one of the showrunners on Minority Report for Fox, and they wrote a trans character into it, and they didn't actually make it in onto the screen. But he's like, oh, you got to tell me all about all the trans uh, actors. And so I gave him a big list. And then I um, I uh, put myself on there. Nice. So I went into audition. And I did so poorly. It was the worst oh, thing. No. And I had, like, hired somebody to coach me and did all this stuff and had other people coach me, friends. And then, like, I just bombed it so hard. And it was very much that, like, can I do it again? What happened? I don't know what happened. But they're just like, no, nope. thank you. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. And That's it was it. like the worst feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And I pitch stuff. I get rejection all the time. Like I can handle that. But there was something about like doing like there was just no course correcting. When I, I could tell I was like not feeling it and I mm -hmm. and I just uh, It's the worst feeling in the yeah. world. It it really is, especially when you put all that 
freaking effort into <laughs> into getting it right. I had a musical audition um, like a month and a half ago, which was the first one of those that I've had probably since I got to L.A. Um, I I did stage productions, you know, half my life growing up. Uh, and I miss it a lot, but it's hard to do in L.A. because, mm-hmm. you know, it's all 99 cent plan and I can't. Uh, 99 seat plan, <laughs> although 99 cent plan is more apropos, as it were. But um, you wish you made 99. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but it was, it was horrid. It, it 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 just it it went right off the deep end as soon as I got in the room. I I was so practiced and I rehearsed so much. Uh, excuses, excuses. But I I just I blew out my voice. Is what happened. Wow. Like I over rehearsed. Yeah. And I just fucking killed myself, yeah. you know. And then I went in there and I was. Ah, 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 ah. It was. It was Beautiful. The, it gorgeous. was the worst. Yeah. Was wow. The worst. That's yeah. That's terrible. So act, no, I have so much respect for actors. It blows my goddamn mind what people can do, because I have so much anxiety and it's like, and I've always like in in uh. Well, I guess I guess we got the light. Um, in uh. In high school, you know, I was always like the lighting person or whatever, and I'd always have one role behind the, you know, off camera or whatever. And I always, I wanted to do it so badly, I could never get over the anxiety. And partly, it's like queer trans stuff, but like improv classes, I'm like, wow, that looks so cool, but I never, could never do it. I was listening to, well, I listened, you know, I listened you... to the first Nerdist yeah. that that you did. Yeah, that was, which was. Uh, Wait, did I talk? Twenty fourteen. Did I talk about Danger Nights during the Nerdist podcast? No. Okay. So it wasn't. Nerdist it wasn't a thing yet. Post transition. I okay. had already transitioned during. Oh, the okay. Podcast. I had transitioned like seven weeks before or something. Oh wow! I, I mentioned it. I haven't listened to it in a long time. Oh yeah. It was like it was basically like I transitioned, and then Chris was like, "Come on the show. We gotta. Yeah. We gotta. You know, maybe you can help somebody." I'm like, "I need help. I can't help anybody." <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so that was when that use that as the timeline. I think it was 2012 or 2013. Okay. Somewhere in there, and there was like a lot of like starts and stops and sure, of course. Things. But like to go like full time and say like I'm trans and this is what I'm doing, was right. Around then, uh, no. This reminds me of uh, I did. Uh, I had to do a life insurance policy, and they were like, "What? What level of trans are you?" And I was like, <laughs> what level? What are you talking about? Like, there's no, there's no time. Like, transition was a day. I mean, it was like it was like one day. I was like presenting a certain way, and the next day I was presenting a certain different way. And I said, "Like, call me she and her." Now, like, I do take hormones, and there's a hormonal effect on your body, and you grow. I mean, if you're lucky, you grow breasts and and uh, your body changes a little bit. So like that takes you know a puberty amount of time. But I had started that, that two years before I came out as trans. So like I I was on hormones. I was like hiding, binding, and hiding breasts and like wearing a couple shirts because like I had gone on hormones. I guess uh, yeah, two years before that, just to kind of see if it like took down my gender dysphoria and like helped me at all Mm -hmm. and I was heavily into therapy and I just kind of started and it's like a very low dose of like a testosterone blocker and then it's another thing and it's another thing and I just liked it and kept going so you know that's uh, a lot of people will sort of like you know come out and then and then start taking hormones or something but you know there's no necessary process and the thing about it being years I mean I don't know it's like uh it, it, to me, it felt like a day. Like I went, I remember I went to the Oaks, and uh, and it was like, I'm presenting this way now, and I was terrified of walking around in the Oaks, but I just never went back. That's... I had this like timeline, this plan of like, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, and I just didn't. I just, it's just like, it's just a light switch. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. When it's a courage thing. It's like, yeah. oh, can I do this in the world without getting destroyed? And then when you lose all hope and hit rock bottom you do it <laughs> that's kind of how it worked for me anyway for sure yeah um i i have been uh, finding out a lot about myself especially since i've been here in los angeles uh-huh. uh, i was uh i grew up in you know conservative small town mid-america all the i'm talking to you about this but i'm sure all your listeners already know this stuff sorry um they know bits and pieces yeah okay. um but um i i 
I came to the realization that I was bi, and then in the time that I have been here in L.A., I also have now moved to a polyamorous lifestyle because that's that's what works for me. Uh-huh. And um, it's been very odd and strange and wild. <laughs> now, what what level? <laughs> what? Yes, right. How many years? What, what is the tier that I have reached bu- at, this, yeah, at yeah. this point? Are you? Uh, I would I would say I'm about a level six level out of six ten bi at this. At, yeah, level oh, 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 bye. Chaotic uh, neutral. Well, <laughs> um, I am chaotic good actually okay. for sure. Okay. Um, to hell with rules and contracts. I stand for justice above okay. the law. <laughs> but you also like pain. I do. Yeah. Yeah. So well, it sounds like you're having a really good time. I am having a good time. There you go. Yeah. That's what it's. A- and you are as well, right? Oh, yeah. You're working on all these great projects. I mean, I You've got other ones breakup. coming up. My boyfriend moved oh, out I'm like sorry. Of two months ago. He was nerdy. Um, yeah. So I'm in that situation. But uh, yeah, no. Otherwise. But now you're rocking the single life. Yeah. I'm also, I don't need, I'm like, I'm good. I'm totally good. Like, I don't need to do anything. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really into working and I'm really into like doing the stuff that we're doing. And so. Yeah. Which is all really amazing stuff. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's all, it's this all again. very positive. No, listen, I, I, I know, I, <laughs> I don't mean to be so no, fluffery, no. but I'm just. What other notes do you have? Let's get, let's I, do a speed round. I would so let, I have. Well, they're well, all. Well, they're Lori all Patty. scattered. Felicia Day, I see is on there. Oh, I just, or I just wrote down the whole, underrated. the whole list of, of people that I, uh, oh, that, that guest starred on your show. 2013. Yeah, so it was like fall of February 2012. Parks and Rec. Oh yeah, I'll work on that. Seed Day. No. Okay. You were just you were you were writing down. The, I stuff. just wanted to. I wanted to get all of the, all of your uh, cool projects in Wait, there. Wait, is this cause... your is this your next guest? Yeah, that's my next guest. Are we good parents? Yes. Which is a short that she just uh, wrote, produced, and directed with um, Tracy Toms and Sean McGuire. Oh, that's cool. which which we're going to talk about a whole bunch. Nice. Thank you so much, Shadi, for coming in. I know this was sort of all over the place, but that's well, sort of how I, my no, show I goes. That, I hope you're not super disappointed. I hope it's not uh, awkward. Oh, I, d- I, absolutely we, not. We didn't no, solve any problems. listen, I'm the one that makes it awkward. I am. I'm a huge ball of awkward. That's no. that's all I know. That's that's who I am. So uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show. I and love doing how generous and uh, kind you were to me today. <laughs> this is this is this, this Listen, is the greatest day I've any, ever had. Any time you, <laughs> any, any time you need to pick me up, just just give just, me a call, okay. send me a text. Nice. I will. Sounds really. I good. will send you much positive energy. Always. Okay. That's I what like we're it. all about on this, this show. Is, yeah, this is great. I hope that the people that are listening feel positive. Me too. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Zig, for engineering us all the way to the end of the show. Um, you can follow the show, of course, across social at Friend or Foe Pod. That's F A U X. And you can listen to all of the episodes um, of the current show at Friend or Foe Pod.com. As always, thank you so much to Jabberjaw Media. See you on the next one. Visit JabberjawMedia.com for more shows like this one.